One of the most widely followed value metrics for the U.S. stock market was proposed by no other than Warren Buffett. The so-called Buffett indicator is just a simple ratio between the market capitalization of the Wilshire 5000 index, the broadest measure of the U.S. stock market, and U.S. nominal GDP. The idea in a nutshell is that the stock market should be correlated with the economy, at least over time. If this premise is correct, it follows that when the indicator is high, stocks are expensive. When it's low, stocks are cheap. In 2001, Warren Buffett called this indicator probably the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment. Undoubtedly, this indicator would have helped him and his followers steer clear of the dot-com bubble and achieve outperformance when the bubble popped. However, since then, the usefulness of the indicator has become questionable. Should you pay attention to this indicator? Is it possible that stagflation is making it relevant once again? What does it tell us about how much more downside there may be in stocks from here onwards? Hi, I'm David Wu, a former Wall Street investment strategist with a 20-year track record of making actionable predictions about major global change. Welcome to The Money Game, where I take on groupthink, propaganda, and conspiracy theories in my critical analysis of markets, economics, and politics. Before we begin, please hit subscribe so that you will be notified when a new video comes out. Any valuation indicator to be truly useful, it should be mean reverting over time with a well-defined range. The problem with the Buffett indicator is that it nearly quadrupled between 2008 and the beginning of 2022, and almost in a straight line. The indicator suggested that stocks were expensive for a very long time before the market finally turned. Too long for it to have been useful. What went wrong with the indicator, at least its original formulation? What caused the stock market to rise from just 50% of US GDP to 200% of GDP over those 14 years? There are two reasons. The first reason is that corporate profits have increased significantly as a share of GDP during this period. Why did this happen? Well, when plotting labor productivity growth against real compensation growth, we can see that labor productivity grew much faster than compensation received by labor between 2000 and 2015. Just a reminder, labor productivity is defined as output per hour worked, real compensation is defined as compensation per hour worked adjusted for inflation. In other words, the wages and salary or any benefits you, re you receive from your employers. As a result, the share of labor costs in the price of goods and services produced by American corporations fell from 65% in 2000 to just 57% by 2015. It's been reversing gradually since, but it's still much lower than it was 20 years ago. The consequence is that the profit margin of non-financial corporations have risen from 10% at the start of the new millennium to about 13% the last 10 years. That represents a 30% widening of corporate profit margins. This 30% in corporate profit margin is the first reason why the Buffett indicator began to break down. What's the second reason? The fact that labor productivity increased faster than labor compensation meant that unit labor costs slowed. This was probably the single most important driver behind the deceleration of inflation in recent years. Lower inflation drove down short-term interest rates and bond yields across the entire yield curve. In turn, lower bond yields made holding stocks more attractive, driving down earning yields and driving up stock prices. The 12-month forward earning yields of S&P 500 fell from 8% to just 4% between 2012 and the start of this year. This was the second reason why the Buffett indicator broke down. The bottom line, labor productivity growth outstripped labor compensation growth for most of the past 20 years, resulting in increased corporate profit margins and lower interest rates. These, in turn, helped propel the stock market to GDP ratio to its all-time high. Against this backdrop, the Buffett indicator stopped working. Apparently, so has gone, of course, Warren Buffett's magic touch. Over the past 15 years, Berkshire Hathaway stocks have been behaving like S&P 500, except with tracking errors. Value investors have struggled for many reasons over the past decade. But value investing has been outperforming growth investing lately. What are the chances that the Buffett indicator make a comeback? In my humble opinion, the chances are actually pretty good. And this is why. Globalization is the most important reason why American workers have not been able to fully benefit from their increased productivity over the past 20 years. Manufacturing workers in the U.S. and other advanced economies saw their wage bargaining power weaken as their employers began to outsource to China. However, the trade war waged by Donald Trump against China in 2018 began to turn the table for American workers. 
Then came the pandemic that significantly driven up the cost of offshoring and has slowed supplier deliveries. While the supply chain disruption has eased in recent months, it is not clear that things will ever return to where they were before the pandemic. A recent survey by Kearney showed that 92% of American executives expressed positive sentiments towards reshoring. In other words, bring jobs home. The same survey showed that 79% of executives who have manufacturing operations in China have either already moved part of their operations to the United States or will plan to do so in the next three years. Meanwhile, the pandemic seems to have also changed the way Americans think about their work-life balance. I believe this is an important reason why quit rate is at an all-time high. The fact that new business formations, which shot up during the pandemic, have stayed high is another piece of evidence that Americans want more control in the way they live their lives. All this is amounting to a tight labor market that has sent wage growth to the highest level in more than 20 years. As I pointed out in a previous video, union labor costs is now growing at the fastest pace since the late 1960s. Rising union labor costs is squeezing corporate profit margins and pushing up inflation and interest rates. As a result, the stock market has been falling and the Buffett indicator has finally been mean reverting. Ironic as it may be, the pandemic, the new cold war between the U.S. and China, and the prospect of stagflation are together breathing new life into the Buffett indicator as the effects of globalization unwind. If the Buffett indicator is indeed back, what does it say about how much the stock market can fall from here? The drop in the U.S. stock market so far only takes the Buffett indicator back to the dot-com peak. In other words, there is room for stocks to fall further. I'm going to make two predictions for the coming 24 months. One, American corporations will surrender at least one-third of the 30% improvement in their profit margins over the past 20 years to their workers. Two, long-term interest rates will go up to about 4.5% over time. If I'm right, this would imply another 25% downside for stocks. Depending on how, how fast this plays out, this could bring the Buffett ratio closer to parity, as you can see on this chart. One thing is clear, if this turns out to be the case, Warren Buffett might become even more famous than he is. If you got something out of this program, I would appreciate if you were to hit subscribe and hit like. If you want to learn more about my investment strategy, come visit us at davidwuunbound.com. Thank you for listening.